To the story now, former SARS executive Johan van Lohrenberg is back in the hot seat, being cross-examined by Busuom Kwebana's lawyer, advocate Dalim Bofu. Van Lohrenberg is testifying in the impeachment inquiry into the public protector's fitness to hold office. Mbofu also has informed the committee that he'll be writing to President Sir Ramaphosa in the next few days. That's to ask him to testify about accusations he's leveled against his client. Lindsay Dentlinger is in Parliament tracking developments for us and joins us just now. Good morning, Lindsay. A very interesting day for yesterday. Just take us through some of the proceedings. Yes, Mfundo, as you pointed out there, right off the bat, uh, the Dalim Tpofu, before he was started cross-examining uh, the witness, uh, informed uh, this House that he was going to be writing to the President, asking for him to uh, testify before this inquiry. He said it wasn't uh, right that the President had made accusations uh, against the public protector, Busisiwe Mkwebani, who is facing impeachment here, and then not to come and answer for it. And he even went as far as to say considerations uh, are also there. Uh, whether or not to uh, ask former president, uh, whom he did not name, but we can assume that he was referring to former president Jacob Zuma, uh, because we know before this committee they will at some point also to dis discuss an alleged secret meeting that the public protector had with uh, the former president uh, regarding her report on the Reserve Bank. Uh, and so informing the House that that is his intention and saying, Fundo, that uh, if he didn't uh, have luck in getting the president to agree to come and testify here voluntarily, then he would uh, enlist the help of Parliament to invoke uh, some of its powers to subpoena uh, the President uh, to appear. And we know earlier this week the President already responded to a similar call from the UDM saying that that was a misdirected uh, call to expect him to come and testify here. So um, it will be interesting to see how that pans out. We should not forget that uh, on the sidelines of what's happening here in Parliament that uh, on the 25th uh, of this month, the public protector will again be approaching the Western Cape High Court, this time to challenge that suspension uh, that uh, the president invoked, and um, something that obviously they are extremely unhappy with because uh, Busisiwe Mkobani says it's impacting her ability to be able to prepare uh, for these hearings. By being suspended, uh, it has the impact, for example, of her not being able to access her emails. So that is also something that's going to be playing itself out on the sidelines, but it di relates directly uh, to the president's role uh, in this whole impeachment inquiry because this committee has already um, said it is of the view that her suspension uh, has nothing to do with it and that that was purely the prerogative of the president. Mm -hmm. What is the general sentiment, though, of some of the committee members on the president perhaps being invited to come before the committee? Because I know with the others, we've had Ivan Pillay, Johan van Lochtenberg, these were the subject of the rogue unit report. So if ever the CR17 report is to be dissected, perhaps some of them would or many of them would be of the view that he was the subject of the report, so perhaps could give greater context if maybe he was contacted, contacted directly by the public protector what was the relationship throughout the investigation what is their sentiment Possibly, um, Fundo, but we'll have to see when it comes down to, as you say, when that report does get um, discussed. Right now, they are on this report of the so-called rogue unit. Uh, um, the uh, UDM leader, Bantu Holomisa, has already made it clear to this committee uh, in, in, uh, during its proceedings that maybe the president should be called so that uh, his role in all of this can be determined, whether, in fact, he is conflicted in relation to that CR17 report. Uh, and uh, there are uh, some calls also uh, from the EFF that maybe that needs to be tested, whether the president needs to come and answer here. But it wasn't uh, the view shared by all committee members when Dalian Porfu made that announcement here yesterday. Certainly the Freedom Front Plus's Corne Mulder said, for example, that uh, the, um, the legal representative for the public protector couldn't just expect parliament to agree to any of the requests that um, Dalian Porfu might make as to whom uh, he thinks should be called here to testify and that that is really uh, at the discretion of the committee to be 
able to subpoena uh, somebody um, should it come down to it because ideally they would just invite uh, somebody to um, uh, appear before this committee. So I think that matter might uh, reach a, a point when it comes down to discussing uh, that report. We don't know when that would happen. We know that there are four reports that this uh, inquiry will ultimately discuss. And again, Darlene Porfu warning uh, this committee yesterday that he didn't think they'd be able to wrap up their work by their September deadline. Uh, and again, um, the uh, Freedom Front Plus is Corday Mulder uh, again questioning whether that wasn't a tactic perhaps uh, from the public protector side uh, to drag out this inquiry long enough until such time as her office, uh, uh, her tenure at least, comes to an end and then this committee has um, not had enough time uh, to reach uh, its, uh, or to reach a conclusion. Dali Mpofu saying that if this committee was going to be fair, uh, then this process couldn't be rushed and they had to pursue all avenues to get those witnesses who could potentially assist this inquiry to come and testify. Mm. No, it's going to be interesting. And then today again, just wrap, what are we expecting today? It will be the cross-examination, am I correct? Correct, Mfundo. I think the committee would have wanted to have wrapped that up already for the day. They are not sharing their list of witnesses, but we know that Ivan Pillay, also a former SARS executive, was already due to testify yesterday. And there were indications from the evidence leader, Nazreen Bauer, that she was concerned that uh, this committee is already running behind schedule and it's only just the first week. Uh, we know at least uh, two and a half to three weeks have been set aside for witnesses, but certainly I think uh, Mr. Van Lochenberg already in the hot seat long than uh, this committee anticipated. As you point out, cross-examination set to continue, but then he is still to answer questions from MPs. They yet haven't had their turn uh, to ask him questions. And so whether we get to Mr. Ivan Pillay today uh, seems a bit doubtful, given that it is a Friday. Many MPs travel back to their home provinces. Uh, we're also dealing with load shedding here in Parliament uh, in the late afternoon. Uh, and so whether we get to Mr. Pillay uh, remains to be seen. But certainly, yes, Mr. Johan van Lochrenberg for a third day uh, will be um, in the seat to discuss essentially his complaint that he was completely ignored by the public protector when she compiled uh, her report and that he didn't buy the argument that her investigators couldn't find him to contribute or to respond to uh, the claims that she made against him in her report. All right. Lindsay, thank you very much. We'll leave it there for now. That's our reporter, Lindsay Dentlinger, out there in Parliament for us. More news.